Hello, everyone. Today we have a special guest, one of my dear friends, Marco Aulino. Myself and Marco, we studied together Masters of International Business at Nottingham Trent University in the UK. And, um, you know, one thing that stood about Marco in the whole batch was this plant based. Vegan Marco, that's one thing that really stood out about him. A few days and a, uh, a few weeks back, I was just thinking about, uh, I was watching these documentaries, you know, on uh, seaspiracy, cowspiracy, what the health, and the game changers is the biggest, like, it was the biggest blow of the benefits of um, a plant based diet. Now, when I was thinking about making the switch or maybe trying it out for a month, I'm already one month into this uh, plant-based. Um, and the first thing that, I, uh, that came to my mind was, uh, who else has done this? And the first person that came to my mind was you, Marco. Because as a human being, I, you know, sometimes try to identify with things and concepts from the, in terms of the reference, like, do I know anyone who's doing this in my immediate circle, whether it's friends, whether it's university, college, school, and your name came first to my mind. And, you know, that is why I you know, we are uh, trying to do uh, to help other people and, you know, to spread the message because guys, Marco has been in a plant-based diet for now almost five years. So there's a good amount of experience that he is uh, carrying. I'm a one month old baby in the plant-based, uh, you know, food, but Marco is a five-year old, So he's got some experience and probably some wisdom to share with all of us. So let's uh, begin. Uh, Marco, can you tell us a few things about yourself? I mean, I, I know you, but just for the audience. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for, um, thanks for giving me this opportunity, really. Um, um, yeah, I mean, you said you're a, a month old baby. I'm, I'm a five years old toddler. I'm not, not, not even an adult or a teenager. Still, still, they're still learning. I guess the one thing that I've discovered, discovered since since going kind of plant based is that it's a journey, and you you don't start um, knowing everything, and 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 it's kind of it's kind of taking the first baby steps. That's that's the that's the difficult part. But then the reason I'm going journey that's gonna endure for your whole life and that that's kind of the nutrition element and the knowledge element um but i'm i, I mean i stumbled across the vegan diet like it's exactly like you i was um I, i'm italian and currently living in the uk uh, for those who, who kind of don't know me and i was visiting home in italy um in 2017 and i was quite bored one one, one kind of evening and i just put on Netflix and ended up watching What the Health. I, I just didn't know anything about nutrition, kind of plant-based diet, um, but I do have quite a scientific mind. So if I'm presented with facts, there are, I mean, like science and true facts, then the way that my brain works is, is that I cannot reject those facts. I need to embed those facts into my, my the way that I view the world around me. And what the elf is is a very provocative documentary that talks about the impact on all the animal-based foods having your health. And I went vegan called Turkey, and I just never looked back. So it's I started that. So I went vegan uh, for a few weeks, um, but I wasn't um, I wasn't making my own food. I was still uh, kind of visiting my parents, so there was a little bit of we kind of trying to influence them as well, which wasn't wasn't definitely easy. Um, and then I stayed for a few weeks in my um, auntie's house, who was kind of giving me a place to stay um, until I moved 
into uni dorm on the 19th of September. And that's where I gained full control of what I was eating because for the first time I was making my own food, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, and that, that did facilitate things because then I'm the one going to the grocery shops and buying the food that I'm going to be keeping in my fridge. And I'm the one who's going to be putting kind of food on the table. So it's, that's definitely a big element of, of kind of following a plant-based diet again getting, getting full control of what, what you're eating and um, and i guess and i guess that's it I'm, i mean as i said i live, live in the uk now um got got a little family got um a little daughter who's, who's going to be two next month and another baby on the way um so it's quite still going through life still trying to figure out things um but definitely what one of the things one of the main i'd say kind of pillars of my life is just find a plant-based diet and, and, and how it's evolved with me over the last five years and how it started as a kind of health focus and how it evolved into the sustainability element and, and, and my job is is linked to sustainability but also uh, kind of the ethical side of things and, and kind of moving away from being a um, kind of plant curious and kind of focusing on health but more also on, on what I buy every day as a consumer in terms of what what I dress, what are what, the things that I buy to clean the house, the clothes that I buy um, for me and my family. So there, there is different layers of kind of being vegan um, and people get closer to that. Uh, there's, there's different reasons. The mine was why a selfish one. I, I just want to be healthier. I just want to be performing better at the gym. Um, but then once you get in, you then get exposed to much more than just just kind of your 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 nutrition and diet really uh congratulations uh con congratulations marco on your um upcoming baby i don't know how to say that but anyway uh but guys can you imagine an italian person is on a plant-based diet no cheese, no butter, and of course, yeah. no meat. But yeah. here's the beauty that um, I think the this choice that, that you made was a very conscious one. Um, it takes a lot because it's very difficult, especially for a European, to make this switch because not all the places are very vegan friendly yet. In mm. some uh, in some regions, yes, but l like in your family, in your culture, and your extended family, it kind of gets a bit difficult because uh, food has kind of become a culture now, and uh, the way you see food now is like it's fuel for the body and it should digest quickly, and you know, so that is really in. So that is one thing about you that inspires me. So uh, let's begin with the first question. Um, why should we like uh, choose a plant-based diet according to you? And is it complete enough to sustain a healthy lifestyle and prevent any diseases? Yeah. I mean that, that's a really good question, and um, probably I'm not I'm not the first person on this on 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 this planet to answer that. Um, I'm I'm not a doctor. Or anything that I'm nothing that I'm gonna say. Uh, I mean, if you want to try it, please do. But if you, especially if you have any health conditions, please speak to your doctors before trying anything that that is kind of different from what you're doing already. Um, but be, before I get into that, what what you said about food being kind of a cultural element yes it is throughout the years i um i sort of realizing how, how people are attached to what they're eating um i think there is i mean food is well becomes who we are you, you are what you eat isn't it is that, that that's the saying um but there is also a, a, a different connotation to food which is linked to to who we are as, as our kind of human beings and and kind of families religions um, and when you when you start challenging the status quo, just in that nutrition side of things, you start realizing how much they upset people. Um, and I and in my personal experience with my 
my family, my, my parents, my, my grandma doesn't even know what vegan means to this day, even if they have been vegan for five years. But when I first went vegan and I started like kind of engaging with my parents in kind of these conversations, it, it wasn't a conversation at all. It was on all our conflict. Um, because on the on the one hand, yeah, I was just changing the way that I was eating, but on the other one, I was challenging the culture and the traditions and all the heritage that my family trust run to me uh, throughout the years. So it, it's very difficult to talk about nutrition, especially with people that are close to you, because as long as soon as ideas are different, it gets to a very emotional level. Um, and it's quite, it's quite a hard barrier to overcome. And, I, and I've seen people trying to, to kind of go um, vegetarian and all kind of, kind of plant-based and kind of failing because they were lacking their support network. Um, which, especially for somebody who's just trying it out, is, is very important to build that support network around you. And the people around you right now might not actually be the best support network because what you're saying is, I'm confusing everything that you taught me and what you're doing is, is essentially wrong uh, because it's not the optimal diet for health and it's not the optimal diet for the planet. But if you focus on, on the health side of things, I mean, there are so many stereotypes around being vegan, like, or uh, vegans, where do you get your protein? Um, or you just, just a weakling, you can't even lift weight or anything. But I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm, um, I'm not in the best shape of my life. Um, I think being a, being, a, being a dad and having a full-time job does now help with kind of going out to the gym and feeling always full of energy at all times. Um, but I'm not dying, I'm not malnourished or anything. Um, and I do believe in the power of the, the kind of the plant-based diet. And if you look, if you look back at ancestors, I mean, we are apes, smarter apes than, than, than all the other apes on the planet. And if you look up like a like, gorilla, chimpanzee, we share like 98, 99% of our DNA with them. And if you look at, at their diet, it's like 95% is like fruit and veggies. And then they get like a, a, a small percentage of their calories from like insects. Um, and if you look at our biology, if you look, for example, if you take the tea, like if you, if you look at a carnivore, like a, like um, even a cat, like they have this very long um, canines that are made to kind of chew and eat meat, whilst we don't, we do have kind of, they the, the might feel sharp, but if you, if you compare them to like a tiger or some, something like that, we it's just only... not made with meat. We only have those teeth one, once in a year, and that is 31st October, Halloween. There you go. Not you the go. other day. Only once a year. Yeah, only once a year. And, and even our, our diet, like kind of all of our stomach and, and, and all the digestion kind of organs, our intestines is quite long and, and it's made to break down very hard and difficult to digest fiber which is kind of, if you think about plant molecules, that, that's kind of the, the um, box where all the nutrients are stored in, in kind of plant foods. Um, if, you, if you look at a tiger or, or a shark or whatever, they have a very, very um, short intestines because once you eat flesh, that flesh is gonna rot in your, in your body and you want to, to take all the nutrients quite quickly and then expel everything else. Um, and I mean that, that's just that's just facts that's just science the, and, and what I've what I've kind of seen in my experience is that there has been quite a lot of movements over the last few years about the carnivore diet the paleo diet but they based on the assumption that humans I say I say as a kind of 10,000 20,000 years ago we were relying more on meat than, than what we actually did um, and if you think about it we were under gatherer, but I think the order is, is wrong. It should be gatherer hunters because we were spending days hunting a mammoth or a lion. I don't even know what we used to eat. But then once you, you, you were successful, there was enough meat for, for a few days before it, went, it was going rotten because we didn't have any ways to store it. And that was once every blue moon, uh, for lack of a better expression. And we relied 90% of our diets with more plant cereals and all of that kind of stuff. And I, and I, and that, and I think they've done, uh, and, and he talks about it in the document, the Game Changers, they, 
start to kind of analyze you know, like the gladiators and, and kind of the, the bones remains from the gladiators and from the calcium and, and the nutrients in the bones, it shows that most of them were vegetarian. And if you look at the, the gladiators, I mean, the, the strongest kind of war in ancient Rome, they were eating up mostly plants. And that is fascinating because if you, if you, if you go, if you walk into any gym, you, you kind of, or, or if you think about bodybuilders, if you think about people eating eggs, meat, chicken breast and broccoli for, for, for every meal, what's actually that's not the optimal, optimal diet for a human being. Um, and I can, I can only talk about my experience, but um, what, what, I, what I soon realized when I made this switch to, to a plant-based diet, and at the time I was doing CrossFit, and, and for those who don't know CrossFit, I mean, it's, it's quite popular now. Um, but you, yeah, you just, just lift heavy and, and it kind of kills you. It's, it's very demanding of your body. And if, if anybody who's listening is, is kind of used to work out, you know that at some point you're going to hit kind of not your limit, but if you start benching, the first month you're going to start increasing 10 kilograms a week because your body is, is kind of building up their strength. But then you get to a point when you quite, your body's quite developed where Hudding even like a kilo, it feels like you can't even lift that weight. And in the first month when I'm uh, when I'm in ve- when vegan, I, I didn't change the way that I was training, and all my lifts increased in weight by 20, 30 kilograms. And I think my back squat, I remember, went from like 85, 90 kilograms to 120, 125 kilograms for one rep max. And that is, what, 30% increase? That is absolutely crazy because I wasn't new to the gym. I've been working out for years. Um, and, and the other big thing that I kind of noticed was my, my energy levels. I usually, um, I function really well in the morning. I'd rather wake up quite early in the morning and then, and then kind of after 4 p.m., I'm, I'm done. I just need to take an up or I just need to kind of slow down and then, then go to sleep quite early. Since I'm new to plant-based diet, my energy level was really high all the times. And, and there was such a big change for me because I, become, I became more productive 12 hours a day rather than just the first six hours of my days. And, and that had an impact on my immune system. I, I, my immune system has is, is always been quite good. But when I'm under a lot of stress, another time was university, now it's more kind of work, um, family stress and whatnot. My immune system, holds up really well when I'm under intense stress and then let's say that I'm I have a project due on Monday I finish it on Monday on the Tuesday 100% no that I'm gonna go down with a, with a cold sore I'm gonna go down with, with some fever and there's been a cost in my life every time that I had, a, I had, a, I had an exam at uni the next day I was sick and that didn't happen anymore since I went on to on the plant-based diet um I guess the last thing, the last thing is that, and then this is backed up by kind of science. And and if you, if you need any any kind of references, that the best place to start. I mean, watching these documentaries that that we kind of mentioned on air, but the best place where you can find information is is kind of um, nutritionfacts.org um, by Michael Greger. And Michael Greger is is such an humble guy, and he, he's a doctor. But he's, he's, I mean, what he, he spends his days, he, he, he reads medical lit, lit, literature around, around nutrition. And then he just collects every year and he comes out with new information about nutrition and whatnot. And that is the best place to start. And he, he advocates plant-based diets. And, he, and he, he has so many studies that shows how eating animal-based products increase inflammation in the body. And if you're an athlete or if your immune system is compromised for some reason, keeping inflammation low is key for longevity, is key for performance. Um, and, and you can't you can't get that on a on a on kind of the a non diet or anything like that. Wow, that was very insightful. Um first of all, those were the Two things that you mentioned, um, actually three things, uh, that the elementary canal or, or, or the intestines of human beings is huge. 
like it's almost five or six times that of the human body itself. So, for example, if you're six feet, your intestines are approximately anywhere between 30 and 36 feet long. With a carnivore, uh, if I'm not wrong, it's three times. So, say if the carnivore, say, is 10 feet long, then the intestine is only 30, which is, you know, for uh, for the size of the mammal, it is not very big, for, but for the size of human beings, we are not very big creatures. Another thing that, you know, came to my mind when you were explaining about this is, you know, the fact is all the meat that we consume, primarily pork, beef, uh, chicken, I would include seafood as well and, uh, you know, things like goat meat and there are so many. In Spain, they eat uh, rabbits and uh, in China, for example, there are lots of more types. So all of these uh, animals, what do they eat? They're eating the plants, they become strong and then they are being cooked and they come into our plates as in the form of food. And, you know, we claim they've got a lot of protein, but yes, they do lack fiber, which is very essential for the human, you know, for the system we have. So those are some yeah. very exciting uh, points. And... Um, yeah, on, uh, on, on that point, Krish, that's that, that's such a good point because if anybody has ever studied basic economics, as soon as you have an intermediary in between in a transaction, the intermediary is, is, is meant to make the process a bit longer, it's meant to find inefficiencies in itself. So all, all nutrients come from plants. Anything that we're going to be eating and, and protein, fat, carb, carbohydrates, vitamins they all come from the animal kingdom uh, with very few exceptions and um, and and if you base your diet mainly on, on animal based product you what you're doing you just rely on another another entity to kind of get the plants get the nutrients from plants and then transform them into what you're eating um but the, essentially the the, the the package in what your food comes in or your nutrients come in is quite important because if you want to get your protein and another protein is quite a controversial topic, and, 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 and that's where well, the example that I'm going to be using. You can either get your protein for, uh, from, from kind of plants. You, you, you got proteins in a banana, but like a gram, gram and a half proteins. Um, or you can, you can have a like green smoothie with spinach, with kale, with protein powder if you, if you need to supplement that, although I barely, barely use any. And the package that comes with the protein comes in is going to be full of vitamins, full of antioxidants, full of things that do your body good, like fibers that you just mentioned. But then if you eat chicken breast, like, yes, you're going to get your protein, but then you're going to get some cholesterol. You're going to get some heme iron that's present. It's this former iron that's present in, in kind of meat, um, mainly red meat, but all kind of meat. And then itself is, is an, it's, it's an inflammatory um, compound that will increase the inflammation within your body. And if you think about how often we eat, even if you only eat a breakfast, lunch, and dinner, our bodies are very capable of self-healing themselves. But if you keep the inflammation high throughout the day, you're not actually giving time to your body to heal. Exactly. And is that really what you want? That's, that's kind of the question. You, you can get all your proteins, all your, all, all your nutrients from other plants or animals, but it's also what you get within the package. That's the important thing. Also, you, uh, you know, you know, Marco, I have, uh, I, I was just noticing it this morning, as I would, uh, as I was cutting a courgette zucchini. It was so smooth and so easy. But I re remember when I was living in UK, when I used to cut the chicken breast or the fish for example the fish was comparatively like very smooth but the chicken breast 
it like I had to put in too much effort. Mm -hmm. So when I was reflecting on my experience, I could see that, you know, when I used to cut a chicken breast, I used to like, it used to be something that involved more effort to cut. It wasn't as easy as cutting a courgette, for example. Any mm -hmm. vegetable, when I cut it, I can see a little bit of water dripping out. And since 72% of the body is anyways water, I think the water-based food, which is fruits and vegetables, and obviously the, no the nuts and seeds and lentils and beans, we have to soak them for anywhere between 6 to 24 hours. I think the essence of the plant-based diet is also to consume more water-based foods. Yeah. And foods that naturally have a very high content of water. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. vegetables have 70% or more, but fruit is just water. Yeah. It's more than 90%. So I think, uh, is that also one thing that you consider when you are uh, thinking about your next meal, about the water content? Yeah, I mean, um, and, and you, I mean, if you go to your doctor and they're quite good, they're going to start talking about what you're eating, what you're not eating, or oh, drink two liters of water a day, keep your your, your body hydrated. Um, but that that's that's really really important piece of information. I mean, I, I, I don't necessarily think about how much water I'm actually eating, if that makes sense, rather than drinking. Um, yeah. But what, what what that plays a big part in is one of the main benefits or if kind of switching from a kind of Western diet full of cheese, meat, refined oils to, to a plant-based diet is, is the weight loss, the most people experience at the beginning. And, and I was one of these people um, because if you, if you think about calories, yeah, the, the plant foods are quite scarce in calories, but quite dense in nutrition. Um, so if you're going to eat, uh, I don't know, some grapes, they're going to be anything, anything higher than 90% of water. Um, and but they're going to be full packed with vitamins that you're going to be and, and antioxidants, especially red grapes. Uh, but then if you eat chicken, um, that chicken will have fewer kind of um, vitamins. I don't even know what's, what's in chicken, to be fair. Um, but in terms of calories, you with the same quantity, with the same volume. Uh, so you get a bowl of grapes and then you get a bowl of chicken. The bowl of grapes won't even be 100 calories, but the bowl of chicken, even if you mm. just like boil it, will have two, 300 calories. So, so there is an element of eating as much food as you want on a plant-based diet, which is currently what I'm doing. I stay away from kind of refined oils and from fake meats. Um, and I try to eat as much wolf food, um, plant based, well, wolf food, plant based food as possible. So, full of raw veggies, full of fruits, full of re unrefined grains. And, and because that's the diet that we're meant to eat, and I can eat as much as I want and I can stay as lean as I want, or actually, I'll stay as lean as my body needs to be in its natural and, and optimal state. And it's no mystery if you look around there is what many consider as an obesity epidemic. I mean, you got fast food in every single corner. I mean, I live in, in the UK, so there is a lot of days driven by kind of pre-COVID culture. Everything was fast-paced. You need to have like a very quick meal and you can get a McDonald's, you can get a KFC, you can get whatever very quickly. Um, but if you get a burger, that's going to taste fantastic. Don't get me wrong, but... That like a big Mac and McDonald's is gonna have five, six hundred calories, but I need three to feel satiated. But then if I eat like some brown rice with a stir fry of vegetables and maybe some tofu or some some kind of beans, sesame I, seeds, sesame seeds sprinkled on top, absolutely. I can eat two plates of that. I, I, I won't even get six or seven hundred calories but I, I wouldn't be able to because i'm going to be so full that 
all my body internal system to tell me you're full stop eating will be there to help me feeling full and, and control my appetite and 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 if you eat the right food that is meant for you um i mean there are there are several systems that we use to that the, our body tell uses to tell us you're full um first how long we eat so putting food in our mouth and chewing is one of the main kind of triggers to tell our body actually we, we're full um mm. and if you if you eat a big mark in you can you can down it in like three or four bites how, how long is that going to take two three minutes i mean if, if, if it's me 60 seconds because i'm, I'm a very fast eater <laughs> but if you're chewing on carrots you're going to be chewing for five to ten minutes just a single carrot and if you're eating a salad if you're eating plant-based foods that's rich in fiber which is really hard to digest that's going to take on average longer but the the time that the food is is then the, the, the time that the food needs to go through your digestion tract that's also important one of the things that refined food and animal foods lack is is fiber what you mentioned earlier and fiber is kind of these very um very um I wouldn't say new because we've been knowing about fiber for the last 50 years, but we don't know a lot about fiber. And over the last 10 years, we found out that fiber is actually, we, we don't digest fiber, we poop it out. Let's put fiber in and it just, it goes out from the other end of the, of the body. But it's not actually for us because part of our digestion is not actually thanks to our bodies, but it's thanks to our flora in our, um, in our intestines, which is full of my, microbes that digest food on our behalf so the digest food and we get the nutrients there are there is a specific type of flora that's mainly found in people that eat plant-based and vegetarian diet they eat some fiber and once they eat some fiber because fiber gets undigested up until the end of our intestines there are two things that happen that flora starts to digest part of it and there is an enzyme which i believe it's a um i believe it then gets recepted in 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 our brain that tells us actually you're full because if if fiber got to that level it means that you've been eating for quite some time but also there is a trigger now i'm, I'm testing my, my memory here um that if gets if it gets um kind of kind of triggered by food it means that we're full, completely full. And straight away, I mean, they inserted tubes in people's intestines and dropped some food on this part of the, the, the right before the rectum. And people that have not been eating for two days felt full straight away. You want to use the body natural mechanism to feel full when you, when you, when you had enough food, if that makes sense. Yes, yes. And that cannot happen on refined foods because you don't give your body the time to use all those systems that we developed in 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 million of years of our evolution mm. to feel full and that's why on average you see vegan people and, and and vegetarian people that are slimmer than people that follow a a, a normal diet i mean don't get me wrong they're going to be the, the the lazy couch potato vegans and i've been one of them when you you can be vegan and eating like french fries and ketchup and and ben and jerry vegan ice yeah. cream and, and and you can be you can be very unhealthy as, as, a, as a vegan, but also, but, but on average, you get people that eat plants are going to be leaner they're, and they're going to be um, having a better kind of cholesterol and, and kind of infl infl inflammation marks in the system than, than people that are not following a plant based diet. And that is, I mean, we are made to eat plants. Everything that, everything, Everything that concerns our bodies and our diet tells us that we're supposed to. The reason why we're not is that and there are several reasons. I mean, our brains are quite demanding of new stimuli. So hmm. one thing that you can do, if you start giving giving your your, your kind of your body high salt, high fatty foods, you're gonna create more. So I mean, there is a very, a very interesting documentary. I think it's called Super Size Me. When this guy 
goes on on a McDonald's diet, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for, for 30 days just to see what the impact on their body actually was. And the, by the first week, they like the first few days, they're feeling sick, they, they, they're vomiting, they're feeling quite nauseous. And then by the end of the documentary, this person was w- w- waking up and they were having like massive headaches because their body was demanding McDonald's and they only could feel better after they start eating McDonald's, showing that a body first is quite capable of adapting. Our flow right now, intestines can can kind of change within a month. Um, so you, if you start eating crappy food, your flora that eats crappy food will increase in number and volume, and and same things the other way around. And but also, it's it's good to be adaptable because in the in in when I was talking about our example of our ancestor eating meat and once every blue moon, you still need to be able to digest that. But now that we don't need to hunt to get meat and we can get in a supermarket and eat like hot dogs and whatever, our brains are addicted to that. Yeah. And that's why people have addiction to, to, to kind of uh, food that they can't stop. We got addiction to gambling, they got addiction to porn, and, and you just cannot stop because our brain, we're so smart but we're not so smart. Part of our behaviors, part of our instincts is all driven by our biology. And, and, and the, I mean, there is no money in selling broccoli, is there? I mean, I don't see any big broccoli corporations pushing broccoli in television and adverts because there is no, not money, but there is an awful lot of fast foods. That's where the money is. And over the years, companies have been able to put more and more calories, more and more salt and fat into our diet. And then once you, once you get hooked, you, you're hooked. You keep on eating that and your body keeps on craving that. And that's why to anybody who wants to try to go on a plant-based diet, I'd say stick to it for about a month. In about a month, your body is going to be able to kind of press the reset button. And, and if you've been eating McDonald's every day, after a month, you're going to stop craving McDonald's. By the beginning, you might feel like if, if, if you use drugs and then you go on withdrawal, you're going to feel pretty much the same. Um, but then if you give your body times to heal, then you actually realize that, that your body craves all the good stuff. If you keep eating smoothie kale every day, then your body will need that, will want that every day rather than, I don't know, a that mac 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 egg cheeseburger bacon mm-hmm. something from mcdonald's for breakfast which is quite common here in the uk you know uh every year in uh jan in the month of january there's this thing in uk called uh, called veganary like everybody tries the plant-based diet for one yeah. m- month and a lot of people, I think uh, every year about somewhere around 200 to 300,000. This is when I was doing my uh, final project of university as a, as a consultant. I was doing this project for an artisan vegan chocolate uh, company. It was a startup based in Nottingham. And when I found out that every year, approximately 200 to 300,000 uh, people in the UK, they go on veganary in the month of January and they try the vegan diet and most of them continue on. Yeah. They, they don't yeah. uh, go back, which is very interesting because if you see every year, if even 200,000 people are making this move or at least trying it in five years you've got a million people who've now made the switch which is also good for the environment in this uh, documentary i saw that to consume a for one person meat uh for a person over the year the water consumption is fifteen thousand liters but for that of a vegan diet or a vegetarian, no, I say vegan, not vegetarian, because vegetarian still includes some animal products. 
for a vegan diet, the person consumes 300 liters. Now that's a massive difference. And since you are into sustainability, I mean, what are your thoughts with 15,000 versus 300 liters of water yeah. needed to you know, produce the food? Yeah, it's, if you think about it, uh, we are able to, to feed 10 or 15 billion animals, but we are unable, we are unable to feed 7 billion people <laughs> on the planet. That is true, and actually. That, that, that's the answer to your question. It, get, it, it takes so much more resources in terms of water, crop, grains to feed a cow um, and to bring that cow from going kind to of be being born being a little calf till he gets to the slaughterhouse and then he gets used for, for kind of animal kind of kind of animal food but how many people can can you feed with a cow and for how long versus how many people could actually eat the grain that you fed to the cow and for how long and and and, and that's why we're unable to feed seven billion people but we're, we're able to feed twice as many animals and 50% of kind of greenhouse gases emissions and the carbon dioxide don't actually come from don't actually come from from driving your car to work um, or from taking a plane or anything like that. Um, 50% comes from animal agriculture. And that's quite scary because every time that you, you talk about being green and kind of being more sustainable, um, they talk about oh, recycle this one and 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 try. Um, try not to not to drive too much and use your kind of wall, use your bike. But actually, the, the biggest impact that you can have on the planet is swapping out that at the meat burger for, for, for a plant based burger um, on your plate. And um, that this is the main that's the main thing. Um, I mean, a few years ago there was this massive fire on in kind of the, the Amazons and all these kind of kind of the, the Amazon forest is the it's kind of the, the lung of the earth that's that's how I refer it to it. and we we just ripping ripping out trees to make more space to to grow more animals I don't even know if grow animals is the right term but it's kind of it's kind of give more meat to people whilst actually that's just what's killing us um our generation might be the first generation that if nothing changes might leave actually less than, than than our parents and and that's going in full future because from from the 1900s every generation has lived longer than the parents if you if you if you don't take into account that the years of kind of the first and the second world war where of course the statistic is irrelevant and are we just eating our way into extinction we that there are some research that shows that that by 2050 there is not going to be any 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 inefficiency and despite Despite the diversity of our of kind of animals, plants in our in our planet, if you if you take one animal out of the equation, that can tip the balance over, and it means that we 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 literally gonna go extinct by by 2050, 2080 as a as a as a race. And that is quite scary. And and yet they tell you that it's you, it's it's your plastic consumption, your your water consumption don't take showers are too long they're killing the planet but actually it's the animal agriculture things and and again it's still us we still make a decision when we when you go to the grocery shopping and we buy our food that's our that's our vote we can vote every day with our with our purchases and if you decide not to buy meat if you decide not to buy cheese that demand is going to drop and that's that's our, us consumers that's the power that we have and that's where we should be using this power because i said it already but i'll say it again the, the, the biggest the, the thing that will have the biggest impact on our environment that you can do is to stop eating animal-based products there's no way around that i think we as consumers have to make this choice of are we paying to the farmer or are we paying to the people who are you know uh, to the to these big corporations who've got large factories and of meat and all other kinds of uh, you know 
processed uh, dairy food. So it's your money, it's your pound, it's your euro, it's your dollar, it's your rupees. The choice is yours, but based on your choice, uh, the whole cycle will be impacted. And now I want to, you know, cover the big question, the elephant question. How do we make this switch? And what are the do's and don'ts while making this switch gradually? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm a very atypical vegan because I went vegan cold turkey. So I, I, at dinner, I, I was eating, um, I think I was eating like chicken breast and, um, and some kind of cheese. And uh, I remember I was eating chicken, which is something that I was quite fond of before I went vegan. And then the next morning I woke up and I was vegan. Like that's that's kind of quite unusual. Um, I think the there are certain people there is that like if you're on an addict, like if, if you smoke, it's very difficult for people who have an addiction to kind of reduce the consumption or reduce the use of whatever they're addicted to. Um, because quite quickly, if you if you if you if you're a smoker and then you say, actually, I'm gonna smoke only five cigarettes today. And then I'm going to smoke another six cigarettes in a week. You, you're not able, you don't have the, the, the willpower to do that. Um, and in that case, then maybe I keep a clean car and, and going kind of cold turkey is, is quite is quite a good option. But for the majority of people, a gradual transition is what, what, what I recommend. And the, the, the best advice is increase the plants that you're eating every day. The, at some point, you're not going to have enough space on your plate. You're not going to have enough space on your stomach. And, and then try to eat plants first before anything else. So if you're looking at uh, kind of lunch and dinner, start, start your meal with a, with a big salad. And then if you want to have chicken, if you want to have meat, add that later. And at some point, if you increase and increase the amount of, of veggies and the kind of plants that you eat in your diet, something else will, will have to give. And, and that something else is going to be the animal-based products. Um, so that's the first thing, just just eat more plants. That sounds as silly as it is, but it's, 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 it's a very good place to start. And, and then the other thing that I would do is stay close to home. And what I mean by that is, I mean, I'm, I'm Italian. I know you, you mentioned it, Grace, but it, it was, yeah. I'm, and people should look at me as like, how are you Italian and vegan? Like, that just don't make any sense. But what, what I've been able to do is take some, kind of recipes that have been with me and my family for years and kind of try to be inventive and kind of swap out the cheese and the meat and all the animal based based ingredients for plant-based ingredients and um, so like um i don't know pesto sauce the only non-vegan ingredient is going to be the parmesan cheese swap people swap it out for some nutritional yeast or for some um plant-based cheese like try and find these these simple things to do so that you're still going to be eating exactly what you what you used to but without any of the animal based products and um, and then lastly there is no such a thing as the, the perfect vegan like and um, i think the definition of being vegan uh, i can't even remember who is the mentor of the word but it means to to try and avoid any animal-based product in your life not just a diet yeah in a world that doesn't allow you to do that so if for some reason you're going to have um, um some broth or soup and in that soup there is a bit of milk with cheese it doesn't mean that after you eat that you you need to go back and you fail then you need to start eating meat and cheese again just cut yourself some slack we're not perfect and and by all means, you can up and you, you you sleep, but then you can kind of get up and and kind of get back on track again. Um, it needs to be a gradual change for most people, rather than rather than going cold turkey. Um, and you can up and make mistakes, and that's and that's fine. Um, just be easy on yourself, and and if you if you if you give yourself enough time, then then your body will kind of recalibrate and. One of the things that I've been told is that is that all oh, vegan food tastes bland. Well, actually, depends on who's making it. <laughs> because I, I proud myself to be a really good chef, but after a while, you also 
your tongue kind of readjusts to the flavors that you have in and what tastes are quite blunt little one just got in um yeah will start test tasting a bit bit better so again eat more plants um swap out ingredients that they're not they're not vegan for vegan ingredients give yourself time and just it's a journey it's never going to be perfect from that one also instead of having cow's milk try coconut milk almond milk oat milk and uh, there's soy milk as well or the raised meal from potatoes from bees from everything oh Mm-hmm. Fresh. I do that yeah. guy. Um, yeah, sure, but... sure. But yeah, thank you so much, Marco. This has been a very insightful conversation. It's been a learning experience for me personally, especially when we sp- spoke over the call the other day. Yeah. And um, I will link below a video of Marco of what he's been able to uh, achieve i'm talking about that crossfit video of yours which i saw when when, I, when we were, were in yeah. uni the one where yeah. you're hanging you're and start, yeah because yeah if if you can do that after going on a plant based diet i think it's worth it i personally think it's worth it yeah thanks Brilliant. a lot thanks for Mark. being here cool. and been a pleasure uh, yeah Thanks a lot cool. for inspiring take it easy. all of us. Yeah, take it easy. I need more plants, guys. That's great. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye.